I don't want to hear any talking. No, are you talking? Am I who am I hearing talk? No talking. Single line. Now come this way. Stay right here with me. Don't get in front of me. Now stop. 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 Wait on Mr. Wynn. No talking. Go ahead. Let's, let's march them in. We don't have time to wait for pictures. Let's go. Let's just go. On. Everybody march in. Huh? Welcome you here tonight to the first quarter program night of the 2013-2014 school year. Man, this looks great. I pre I, I, I'm amazed at all you people. Now, I want to ask you, do you get, that, get to your church services that early? I mean, hey, it's great. It's great. Yeah, what a joy it is. I'm Dr. Marty Wynn. I'm the administrator of the school here. It is such a blessing to have you. Thank you. Again, I'll say more, a little bit more about it later, but thank you for allowing us the privilege to partner with you in educating and training your children. And I said partner with you because you're the first line of responsibility, not us. We're here to help you, and we consider it a great honor and a great privilege to be able to be, do that. God bless you for being here tonight. And we, we're broadcasting this over the internet. And so you can always tell your relatives that can't make it if they live in a district a state or city. You can tell them, hey, you can go online and watch, watch and name your child and say, get the, his or her awards. And so they could do that. But we always broadcast. But it is so good to have you here tonight. And we want to welcome you. And what we want to do, we're going to start off like we do every school day with our pledges. Miss Breanne Davis is going to come up here and stand right here behind the microphone and lead us in our pledges. And uh, so let's all stand up. All right. And we have four different pledges, we say, every single morning. Breanne. To the, to the American flag. Attention, salute, pledge. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the Christian flag, attention, salute, pledge. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty for all who believe. To the Bible, attention, salute, pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. To the church, attention, salute, pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to my church, and to my Lord upon whom it is built. I will love my pastor and all the members, and I will faithfully support my church with my attendance, money, service, and prayers. 
Amen. Let's remain standing as we go to the Lord in prayer, thanking you again for being here. I want to thank those pastors of the different churches that have come here tonight to see their students and what they have done and, and being the ward. Hey, that's good when you have pastoral encouragement as well as parental encouragement. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you tonight thanking you for who you are. We thank you for the precious gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We're thankful for this great school that you've given us. Thank you for the great families and the parents and the friends that are supporting this school, Lord, Lord, and encouraging their children to be trained in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and to get a good academic education. And we're thankful for those that we partner with this year, Lord, as we train and teach young people. And we thank you for our teaching staff. We thank you for the men and women who are committed to giving of their time and their efforts, Lord, to coming and making certain that these young people are getting what they need. And then we thank you for the students and their hard work that we'll be recognizing tonight as some get awards. And we're thankful for them. And I pray you'd bless now. Have your hand up on this time together tonight. Thank you again for Lighthouse Christian Academy. In Jesus' precious name, we ask all of these things. Amen. And you may be seated. It is good to have you here tonight. Thank you for being here. Uh, I want to ask the principal of our school, Mr. Stephen Wynn, to come up. Uh, he has some announcements to make to you. Now, uh, every week, every week, now, listen, okay, it's time, honesty is good for the soul, right? I want to know, every, every single solitary Wednesday, you get a parent's communication pack, and inside of there, you have this weekly reminder. It's called the Ranger Reminder. How many of you actually read it every single week? Ah, okay, good. Good. That, that, that's a good participation. Then I want to know when something comes up. Oh, when was that announced? Boy, I tell you what, our mind, get, hey, you're like me now. If I don't write it down, I don't remember it. But Mr. Wynn is going to come up now and give us some announcements about some things going on. Thank you. This right here, good? Can That's fine. All right. Well, I do want to thank the teaching staff as well. Um, I couldn't do it without them. Amen. We're here every day, 7.30ish, <laughs> all the way to 4, 5, 6 o'clock at night. And I, um, they deserve um, a just, 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 just a round of applause. Amen. They, they go above and beyond. But I also want to uh, just also thank the parents. Um, you know, sometimes we have to call you, and uh, we appreciate the fact that we have parental backing. And uh, when things need to get handled, y'all y'all handle it. So, you know, y'all um, give yourself a pause as well. Amen. All right. I also want to thank you. Uh, we had great participation in the fundraisers. Yes. This year. We had um, almost full participation. So we appreciate the fact that um, y'all helped us, because that helps keep our tuition to low to where the average person can't afford it. So we appreciate the help help with that. But on the announcement side, tomorrow is a half day. It's an early release day. They all get out at noon. All right. Except for the K-5 program, they are out tomorrow. So they can um, have a three-day weekend. So they get to have a little, a little bit more fun than the, rest of the, than the rest of the group. Also, November 11th, all the teaching staff is going to continue in education classes in Prattville. So it will be a teacher planning day. That's a Monday, November the 11th. Um, we will be out of school because of the teacher planning day. And also for um, coming up, we'll start our science projects. It'll take us about, I think we have it on the schedule for about three to four months. And this is for the first grade all the way up through the 12th grade. Their science project topics are due on November the 7th. And that, that just needs to be a three by five card with their name, their grade, their teacher, and the uh, subject they plan on writing about. It needs to be a broad subject even though their experiment may be more, more narrow like um, on a certain type of blood so they can write on like DNA so they can write on blood or something of that nature. It needs to be wide enough that they can find information to write about. Alright and that's about all the announcement it is for right now. So I'll call Pat, uh, Dr. Wynn back up for the rest of the program. Alright. Well, now, you are at a Christian school. So one thing we are going to do is we're going to sing, and then we're going to have a brief look at the Scripture. 
no, rest easy, no offering to be taken, okay? <laughs> and so that, that, that's, a great, that's a great thing, all right? But we do, if you, if you, we're going to sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. If you need the book, it's right there in front of you, down under the chair in front of you. Uh, page 336, let's stand up. Sing it with me. Page 336. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now... I see on the second verse, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relief. How precious did that grace appear! The hour I first met Sing that through many dangers, through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead. Me, oh, sing it on that last when we've been there. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no last days to sing God's praise. That when we first begun. Amen. Thank you very much. And you may be seated. And we always want to have a Bible challenge anytime we get together. Now, young people, we ask that, remember, when I'm talking, you don't talk, okay? Now, I, I know, I know some of them, you got to, I feel for you at home. If you have to tell them the same thing as often as we do, and you do, I know, don't grow weary in it, though. It will pay off. Amen? Amen. Uh, if you did bring a Bible with you tonight, I'd encourage you to open it up to the first chapter of the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. Uh, one of the prophets of the Old Testament, the book of Daniel. Real familiar story about a fellow by the name of Daniel, obviously, and he had three friends. What were they? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's right. Somebody said Shad Shadrach, Meshach, and the Billy Goat, you know. But, uh, but uh, no, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, I want to read just a brief section of Scripture and give you, a, 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 you might say, a parental challenge out of it, if I might. In Daniel chapter 1, uh, the Bible says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Jerusalem and besieged it. Make a long story short, the next verses tell us how he captured Jerusalem and took captives over a thousand miles away to a place called Babylon. Now, among these, and he says, now among these in verse 6 were the children of Judah, and their Jewish names were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Unto the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel, now get this right here. Now here's a young man. Now we think of Daniel as being an old man. By the end of Daniel, he is an old man. But in Daniel chapter 1, he is still most likely in his latter teen years. Maybe early 20s, but most likely latter teens. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And the rest of the chapter tells us that Daniel and his three friends were put to the test for ten days. They were given vegetables and water. At the end of ten days, 
They appeared fairer and fatter and better off than all the rest. And so Daniel and his three friends instantly became hits of the kingdom because all the other captives were put on vegetables and water instead of steak and wine. But at the end, when the king tested them, in verse 19, and king, the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters, now you, you want to know how do you make your children turn out better? In all manners of wisdom and understanding, the king inquired of them, and he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued, even under the first year of King Cyrus, about 80 years. Now, here's the thing. You say, so if I want my kids to turn out right, I, I don't feed them any steak and put them on bread and water. No, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is found in verse 8. Daniel had purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Here is a young man, teenager, with teenage friends. The historians tell us they probably carried away somewhere in the estimate of around 10,000 captives and moved them. And the way they did, what they did, they would move all these captives so far away into another country. They would give them another culture, teach them another language, so that they might lose all identity of what they had growing up. Can I tell you the world is doing the same thing with our kids today? They want to change the culture of our kids. They want to change the language of our kids. They might have, our kids may have grown up in a fine Christian home, and yet they can be influenced. Now, how do you get teenagers to be like Daniel, to purpose in his heart? That's an interesting thought, isn't it? How do you do that? How do you get young people? If you notice our school slogan, on water, uh, we put training good and godly kids. Because it's one thing to be, parents have the idea that sometimes I ha I've got a good kid. They didn't kill anybody last week. They didn't do dope last week. They didn't get drunk last week. They're good kids. If all I did was succeed in raising a good kid, I failed as a parent. Because my job as a parent is to raise a good and godly kid. Amen? I promise you, that's what Daniel and his friends were all about, his three friends. Later on in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar, the, cap the, the king that captured them, builds a 90-foot statue of himself. And he brings the musicians in and he says, All right, people, hear ye, hear ye, here's the word of the king. Now, we're going to start the music up in a minute. We're going to get the, the bands going, and when you hear the music playing, if you'll just bow down to the, my statue there of me, everything will be okay. But now, here's the consequences if you don't. See the furnace over there? You get chunked into the furnace. And you get burned up. So the music began to play. And what happened? Everybody in the kingdom bowed except for four guys. Now, how many was carried out of Jerusalem? They tell us about 10,000 or so, historians do. Now, wait a second. What about all the rest of them? Four out of thousands said, I'm not going to bow. The king got word of that, and he went over there, and he said, no, hang on, guys. I'm, I love you to death, man. You, 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 you are ten times better than everybody else in the kingdom. I know you want to do the right thing. Listen, I'm going to give you ch chance number two. What we're going to do is we're going to play the music again, all you got to do is just bow your little knees down. Now, I don't care what you think in your heart. Just act like on the outside you're right in agreement with everything going on. And what happened? They said, King, you can do what you want to. But we serve somebody bigger than you. Amen. Let me tell you, how do you get people to purpose in their heart, Daniel 1.8? You train your children up to understand that they are not just accountable to you, but they're accountable to somebody higher than than you. Amen. Somebody higher than you. Because one day, the Bible tells us, every single one of us sitting here tonight is going to give an account to God who made us. Right? Amen. And if you want your child, how many parents wring their hands when little Johnny or little Susie leaves home? Oh, I hope they do okay. 
How many mamas have lost nights of sleep? Well, most mamas have, yeah, okay. That's just what mamas do, right? You worry, right? But if you know you've done... Now, I said, you, number one, you teach them that they're accountable to somebody higher than you. Okay, number two. I guarantee you their parents were consistent. Can I tell you that right there? That word, consistent, is the number one word of being a successful parent. Is being successful, consistent across the board. Because here these young people left. They were a thousand miles. There's no way mama, daddy, or the preacher back home was going to find out about what they were doing in Babylon. They did not have email, text message, and tweets. And they certainly didn't have Facebook. Okay? They didn't have any of that. They could have done anything they wanted to do, and nobody back home, mom or daddy, was not going to find out about it. But guess what? They didn't want to do it. Why? Because back at home, notice, back, go back and read Daniel 1.8, but Daniel purposed. Now, we're a school here. Purposed. P-U-R-P-O-S-E-D. What does that make that? What form of work, what tense does that make it? It's a past tense. He didn't wait till he got there to make up his mind. His mind was made up before he got there. Now, don't raise hands because you do not. You can plead the fifth here. All right. Have you ever done something though? Because you waited till you got into the situation. Maybe it was when you were younger and you got into yourself in a situation you, you really didn't mean to wind up in. Maybe morally. And then it was too late to make up your mind because the decision was already done. Yeah, see, it doesn't, it doesn't start then. It started way back here for Daniel. Mom and Dad, and I'm about done, I want to encourage you. Teach your children to answer to somebody higher than you. That's God Almighty. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. And then you teach them, you teach them that they make up their mind what they're going to do in any given situation before they get to that situation and teach them to be consistent with it throughout their life and you will get Daniels who will honor God with their life amen, amen. and that's what we're trying to do amen I believe that's what you're trying to do I know you're sending them here for a good education and they're getting that and we, and I'm not just saying it, we can prove it. It is a quality education. We meet and exceed, exceed all Georgia state requirements. But they are also going to be challenged to give their life to God and to serve him faithfully. And no, whatever area of life God has them. Maybe it may be a missionary or it may be a doctor. Or it may be a preacher or it may be, uh, it may be a mechanic. Who knows where God's going to have these young people. But they need to do something that's going to matter. Daniel did something that mattered, and here we are several thousand years out still talking about Daniel. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to share some word of God with you tonight. Now, I know that although you know you come here, you're going to get the word of God. But that's not why you came tonight. That, because you certainly didn't come with your cameras to take pictures of me. Did you? Because you'd get one shot and then I'd break the camera, all right? But you came because you have some precious children and grandchildren here and friends that have worked hard over the past nine weeks. And they've done an outstanding job. And I want to tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited because, number one, we, I apologize. We, did, we should have thought. Next time we will have more chairs put out when you get here. But I'm excited too because last year, if you remember, we, you know, they'd come up here on the platform and do their thing. We got the platform and the choir loft now that would they have to take up. Hey, thank you again for your confidence in Lighthouse Christian Academy. And so I'm going to have Mr. Wynn now bring the students to, to show you. They're going to sing a song. They're going to quote some scripture. And they're going to get some awards. Amen. Amen.
John 3, 1 through 17. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, Didn't they do a wonderful? Give them another hand. And I'm, pr I'm proud of them because now, some of them I can identify with. When I was their age, some of them are, are now some are not shy, but others are a little shy. Now, I can identify with the shy people. I know people don't believe that when they see me now, but back that many years ago, I told somebody the other day, I said, I was so shy when I was that age that I used to make my shadow go to another room so I could change clothes, you know. But, uh, uh, I mean, it was just that way. And I'm proud of it because they all participated, every one of them. That was great. That was a great job, young people. Thank you so much. Now then, they get recognized for their academic work. Mr. Wynn, you want to come begin the presentations? All right. All right, there we go. All right, well, we're going to have our elementary supervisor, Mr. Donald Wyckoff, come up, and he's going to recognize the five demerits or less list, perfect attendance, and hundreds club. So give him a hand. Yes. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, hey, now let me just say something here. Now, we understand that we try to be somewhat dignified, but now when, when they're called up here to, 
feel free to stand up and clap and wave and shout for them. How, how's that, all right? Okay, I, I, students, we're going to do the five to merit or less. When I call your name, I just want you to stand up, remain standing, and when I call the last name, which I will let you know who it is, everybody can clap, and then you will sit back down. Okay? All right, so five demerits or less. For those of you that may not know what a demerit is, anytime one of the students does something that they're not supposed to do, they get a demerit. And uh, these, through the whole first quarter, got five or less. And we're going to start off with the ones that got five. First, we have Jaleel Acock. Uh-huh. Stand up. Oh, he's not here. Okay. Ethan Larson. Uh-huh. Kiera Moore. All right, now these got uh, received one or less. Uh, Aubrey Moore. Now, the, the rest of the list that I call off didn't get any demerits. Not, not one, not, not any. Now, that, that's hard to do. All right, so we have Brianne Davies. <laughs> Michaela Kaiser. There you go. Tabitha Colbury. Uh-huh. Alexis Limoges. Uh -huh. Emily Mendoza. All right. And last but not least, Savannah Waldrop. All right. Good job. All right. Good job. Good job. <laughs> yes, I, I think so. I think so. I, right. Now we're going to go to perfect attendance. That means they didn't miss any days of school. All right, first there's Christopher Blankenship, Nate Blankenship, Brockton Bledsoe, yeah. Brock Crane, Zion Cunningham, Tyler Jackson, Ethan Larson. Alexis Limoges, Corey Moore, Kiera Moore, Joshua Moore, that's where he perished, isn't it? Is there Joshua Moore? Yeah, Joshua Parrish, sorry, it says more on it, I'm just reading. Okay. Uh, Andrew Roberts, uh, Javon Stroud, he's not here, and Savannah Waldrop. Let's give him a hand. All right. All right. Now, just so you parents know, this is the one that I'm proud of. This is called the 100s Club. And what that means, as you know, they all take paces. They have to complete the pace, take a self-test, and then they have to take a test. And if they made a hundred, they got on. We had a board up there had cows on it. And every time they got a hundred, we put a circle on their cow. Now they have their cows because this time we're doing a football field. You'll see it up there if you, we go up there after the program. All right. Now, now I'm going to call out your name. You stand up and I'm going to say how many 100 that you received this first quarter. All right. All right. This where we can, they, they can, they can shout for the kids. You can shout for the kids. All right. Derek Dickey received one. <laughs> All right, Tabitha Colbury received one. <laughs> Autumn Powell received one. <laughs> Elijah Bond received two. <laughs> James Bond received two. <laughs> Michael Groover received two. Brandon Cooper received three. Douglas Abernathy received four. Ethan Larson received four. Joshua Oswalt received four. Hey, he's standing down here. <laughs> All right, Logan Davies received five. <laughs> All right, J 
Jules Diamond received five. Armani Lewis received five. Jacob Oswalt received six. <laughs> Mariah Putz received six. Brock Crane received seven. Michaela Kaiser received seven. Joshua Paris received seven. Brand Davies received eight. Corey Moore received eight. This must be a misprint or something. Tyler Jackson received nine. Emily Mendoza received nine. Savannah Waldrop received nine. Alexis Limoges received 10. <laughs> Nate Blankenship received 10. Kiara, I'm sorry, Nate, that was 11, not 10. I'm sorry, I shorted you once. Kiara Moore received 11. Paola Mendoza received 13. <laughs> Mr. Zion Cunningham received 14. <laughs> Christopher Blankenship received 15. <laughs> Jonathan Blankenship received 16. We have one more, and before I announce this person, I must tell you, she's in my class, okay? <laughs> Not that that means anything. This young lady made 100 on every pace that she took. Wow! So, Annie Ash received 18. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job. Uh, Mr. Wyckoff's just jealous because I have the best class. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to go through the honor rolls now, give out a certificate for those that made A honor roll or AB honor roll. First we'll do A honor roll. This means they had an average of 94 to 100% average and have three stars in every core subject and that takes a lot of work. So let's give a hand to Douglas Abernathy for receiving a 93.67. Miss Annie Ash with a 100% average. Christopher Blankenship with a 98.92 average. Way to go, Christopher! Jonathan Blankenship with a 99.75. Also receiving A level, Nate Blankenship with a 95.65. All right! All right! <laughs> Ace Bond also receives A honor roll with a 93.67. Uh, also receiving A level, Brandon Cooper with a 96.31. Mr. Brock Crane also receives A on roll with 95.11. Also receiving A, a on roll, Zion Cunningham with a 
young man. Miss Breanne Davies receives a on roll with a 98.06. Jules Diamond receives a on roll with a 95.11. Mr. Jewel. Michael Groover also receives a on roll with a 95.88. Tyler Jackson also receives um, A on row with a 97.17. Also receiving A on roll, Michaela Kaiser with a 96.67. Also receiving a honor roll with a 94.5, Ethan Larson. Way to go, Ethan! 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 <laughs> also receiving a honor roll, Armani Lewis with a 94.09. All right, also receiving A on roll, Alexis Limoges at, for, at a 98.33. Way to go, Alexis! <laughs> Emily Mendoza also receives A on roll with a 97.67. Way to go, Emily! Emily! <laughs> also receiving A on roll, Paola Mendoza with a 98.94. Also receiving A on a roll with a 96.69, Corey Moore. Corey! 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 Also receiving A on a roll with a 98.67, Kira Moore. Kira! With a 95.5 sit, Jacob Oswald also receives A on roll. Way to go, Jake! Jo Joshua Oswald also receives A on roll with a 95.05. Joshua Paris. Receives A on roll with a 97% average. All right, Savannah Wadrup with a 97.67 receives A on roll. All right. Receiving A B on roll with an 88.72, Brockton Bledsoe. Brockton, Brockton, Brockton. Receiving A B on roll with a 89.68, Elijah Bond. Elijah. Good job, man. Receiving A B on roll with a 91.7, Logan Davies. Okay, okay, okay. Receiving A B on roll with a 91.88, Miss Tabitha Colbury. Receiving A B on roll with a 93.08, Miss Mariah Putts. Mariah! Way to go, girl! There you go. Good job, girl. And Mr. Andrew Roberts receives A B on roll with an 89.81. All right, 
all the rest of the awards are divided into four categories, K-5, first through fifth grade, sixth through eighth grade, and ninth through twelfth. All right, receiving the most 100s out of the K-5 division with 11 100s, Miss Kiera Moore. In the elementary division, first through fifth grade, Miss Annie Ash with 18 100. The most 100s out of the junior high, sixth through eighth grade, we had a tie. A tie? A tie yeah, with eight 100s. The first one up is Miss Brianne Davies. And also Corey Moore with eight one hundreds. And the high school division with two one hundreds, Mr. Ace Bond. All right. Now the next one is the most paces. That means they have completed the most paces out of everyone else in their age group. Completing, well, we had a tie with the elementary. Completing 20 paces, Mr. Nate Blankenship. Also um, with 20 paces, Logan Davies. All right. Uh, out of the 6th through 8th grade division, with 20 paces, Mr. Corey Moore. And last in the high school division, not only did she beat everyone in the high school, but also everyone in the entire school. She completed more paces than anyone else in school. Miss Aubrey Moore with 23. Now the highest pace average. Highest, highest pace average. Always got those. You did? All right. <laughs> and the K-5 division with the 98.67, Miss Kiera Moore. Way to go, Kiera! <laughs> All right, receiving with a 100% average, Miss Annie Ash. In the 6th through 8th grade division, we're going to keep in the same family with the 98.06, Miss Breanne Davies. Way to go, Bree! Way to go! In the high school division with the 93.61, Ace Bond. All right, the last award, the Ranger of the Quarter. <coughs> Dr. Wynn's going to give those because these are students that are, are well worth the uh, award. Amen. Ranger of the Quarter. Now, each quarter we pick, well, we, we select a student from each division that best exemplifies the academic achievements and the spiritual qualities and the character qualities that, and it really, there's so many of them that deserve it. But we have to narrow it down to one in each. It's not that the others didn't deserve it. It's just some, some stood out just in special ways. And this, this time, in the kindergarten division, the Ranger of the Quarter recognition goes to Alexis Limoges. In the elementary division, Paola Mendoza.
<laughs> In the junior high division, Tabitha Colbury. And then the final one is our high school division, Miss Aubrey Moore. Well, thank you again tonight for being here, and it's important for you to come and cheer your students on. And let's give them all a hand again, all right? And so that's a, a great blessing. They've done a great job. Now we're into the second quarter. Remember, what's the key word I mentioned a while ago? Consistency. Say it. Consistency. Let's keep it going. What, everything you did to make them so successful the first quarter, let's do it again the second quarter. Amen. And that will be a great, great blessing. Now, we're getting ready to dismiss. And we're, when we pray and dismiss, we're going to ask that you let the students go out first because we want you to follow them upstairs and see the work they've done. The kindergarten is back here, out the back door and down the hall to the left. Uh, where's Ms. Ren where's Ms. Colby? There she is. Um, stand up so everybody can see you. She'll be, she'll be showing you the kindergarten. Our kindergarten a su a supervisor is not here tonight. She had a, a ladies' conference that our church was attending over in Pensacola, Florida. And so I appreciate Ms. Colby helping out tonight on that as well. Ms. Colby, would you stand back up again? And Ms. Crystal Moore, would you stand up? These are our helpers, our monitors in our school this year. And let's give them a hand. Amen. Amen. And of course, we have our music teacher over here to my right, your left, Miss Stephanie Slavy. All right. And then we have Mr. Wyckoff. He's our elementary supervisor. Give him a hand. And then our high school supervisor and our overall school principal, again, Mr. Wynn. And let's give him a hand. And I'm thankful for the leadership of our school. I want, and I want to add my thank you again to what Mr. Wynn said earlier about your encouragement and your help in the fall fundraiser. Um, that's why it helps us keep the tuition down. And let's keep it that way, amen. And I want to say thank you also to Mrs. Bledsoe, uh, one of our parents that was so gracious and kind and helped us this week, this year, in our school pictures. And let's give her a hand right back here, amen. All right, one more, kind of the unsung hero of the place too. Over to my left, your right, is the one that makes certain you get your bill every month. Amen. Give her a hand, Miss Barbara Stewart. <laughs> and and, and uh, she, does, she does keep the paperwork straight. Speaking of, we are able at this time, and if anybody is interested, I've had a couple of people ask, Yes, we can set up for automatic deduction, or you can also pay with credit debit card, okay? We do have that available now. And so if you uh, have any questions about that, you can see me or see Mrs. Stewart, and we can help you out on that, okay? Well, God bless you for being here this evening. Let's stand up. I'm going to ask our elementary supervisor if he'll come forward and lead us in our closing prayer. Then after he prays, please let the students exit first, and then you go and follow them out. All right, let's pray. And Father, Lord, it's been a blessing to be here tonight, Lord. I thank you for all the hard work that our students put in uh, this quarter, Lord, and all the good grades they made. We just ask, Lord, and we just thank you, Lord, for the parents that came out here tonight to support their kids. We'd ask, Lord, you'd continue blessing, continue giving us a good year, Lord, and we just pray as we partner together with one another, Lord, that will uh, raise these kids to not just academically but spiritually also. Lord, just guide us as we go home in a little while. Lord, give us a safe trip. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.